G'day guys, welcome to tonight's stream, two nights in a row here, so um, thank you first of all to my missus for allowing me to do this again tonight, but I thought we'd try something a bit different tonight, a lot of you guys have been saying to me, when are you going to drive something fast? So tonight we are driving something that is definitely a lot faster than what I'm used to, uh, we're taking a spin in the Ferrari 488 GT3 in iRacing, so just sort of testing this out to see whether it's maybe what I'm going to do for the next season, season 4. Uh, unfortunately I've made a bit of a screw up as you guys let me know in the comments, I didn't realise about the whole um, MPR thing. Uh, so I didn't get the races that I needed to done, the four races, that I, four, three, four, four, four races that I needed to get done for the um, MPR prerequisite for Class C. So I'm stuck in Class D at least for the first week, uh, which means I can't do the Porsches, unfortunately. I wanted to test those out. But uh, yeah, we're going to give the Ferraris a go. We've already tried out the Skip Barbers. I'm going to give the F3s a go as well, maybe tomorrow, and see how I go there. So I've done a little bit of practice today. Uh, a bit of testing and getting my wheel dialed in and everything. We're using the Asher Racing wheel again tonight. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, before I get too um, caught up in rambling and stuff, let's jump into the game because I'm definitely going to need to do some um, some practice laps before the race starts in... What's the time now? We've got three minutes until the race starts. So, try and do a lap there. She's a beautiful looking car. All right, now I do... You'll notice there on the left hand side of the screen wherever it's pointing through for you down 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 there there uh, you can see I've got the auto clutch on now I haven't been able to practice my starts yet and I was finding that I was just dumping it and stalling every single time so yes I'm using auto clutch for tonight no by the time I actually come to race this for realsies if I do end up racing it for realsies in the next season I won't be using auto clutch I'll make sure I've got it figured out by then uh, just having a quick look at your questions here just a random question what's your day job uh, day job is doing online marketing and stuff like that. I've got a couple of different businesses that I run as well as working for a few different clients as well and sort of slowly transitioning into making this more of a full-time type thing. Uh, screen not loading for anybody else. What screen not loading? Let me just check and make sure everything looks good. Uh, making sure before yeah it looks looks like it's working for me so if it's not working for you it must be a problem on your end but um yeah let me know if you guys are having any problems um yeah heart rate is high my heart my resting heart rate is pretty high anyway um because of my anxiety and stuff which i've talked about before but um yeah i always get nervous when i'm streaming as well i don't know why i've made an idiot of myself that many times already that i shouldn't really be worried about doing that but um nonetheless Hopefully, that, whoa, we've got one driving out onto the track already. Now, you guys have kind of warned me that the quality of driving is not particularly high in the Ferraris. And I've certainly kind of witnessed that in the practice sessions that I've done so far. I've had a lot of people sort of just drive out on the track. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see. I'm going to let this guy pass. I'll break a little bit early so he can Clear sail on side. past. Clear left. On your left. Oh, he spun. Clear left. Now we are going to be doing a race tonight, this is just an open practice before the race starts in about two minutes time, so we'll see the race prompt prop up in a moment, and then we'll do qualifying and race, and uh, yeah, see how we go with that, maybe hang around for a bit of a chat afterwards as well. Another spinner. Seems like the key to success in the Ferraris is to just not crash. Whoops, a little bit wide. Screwed that up. What's the time? How much time we got? Uh, we got about 30 seconds until we get called for qualifying, so... Not going to get time to do too many laps here, unfortunately. So my best lap, in case you can't see it down there in the bottom left, is a 204.033. There we go, race is starting now. So we'll pull over here, get out of the way. Okay. And get the lobby loaded up. <coughs> Pardon me, still got that cough. 
Uh, yes, racing against real people. Uh, there's no AI in iRacing as far as I'm aware, unless somebody's made a bot. So um, how am I monitoring my heart rate? I've got an old, uh, I'm not going to lift my shirt up because nobody wants to see that. But I've got an old, um, it's called a Zephyr HXM. And it's a Bluetooth heart rate monitor that I actually bought for back when I did mountain bike racing. And, um, or well, racing? Riding. <laughs> I never raced. What am I talking about? Uh, mountain bike riding. So I haven't, it's actually been sitting in a cupboard for about three or four years now. Maybe even longer, more like seven years actually, 2012. Um, and yeah, I fished it out the other day and turns out it hooks up to the PC. So I managed to use that. And the um, app that I'm using is called Cardia. And then it just overlays inside um, inside Streamlabs OBS. Uh, if you guys want to see more about how I set that up and everything, let me know in the comments, and I'm happy to do a, um, a video on how to set that up. Pretty straightforward though. You just connect it via Bluetooth, and it just kind of does its thing. AI is coming to iRacing, is it, Scott? Where'd you hear that? I haven't heard that. We're working on it. Awesome, awesome. That would be good. I would love to see some AI. Anyway, I'm gonna try and get a practice lap in here. If you've only just joined the stream, uh, yes, I am using auto clutch at the moment simply because I'm still getting used to this car. But if I do end up doing it in season four, I won't use auto clutch. I'll make sure I practice my starts before then. But for tonight, for the purpose of this, I figured nobody wants to watch me um, stalled on the start line. So we may as well cheat a little bit. But no other assists are turned on. There's no auto clutch or, or auto clutches on it, but, but um, there's no like auto braking or anything like that. No racing line, obviously. Temperature's increasing. It's now 38 Celsius. Now the um, Simicube 2 Ultimate that I'm using tonight um, did require quite a bit of tweaking to get to feel right with this car, which I was a little bit surprised by because the um, Skip Barber and all the other cars that I'd driven with this kind of just felt beautiful out of the box but this wasn't notchy but it was a little bit um, muted I think would probably be the best word a little bit watered down a little bit dampened there we go about to get into qualifying now so yeah I did a bit of tweaking and got it to a point where I was pretty happy with it all I did was basically turn up the inertia a little bit uh, adjust the amount of force and a couple other little bits and pieces like that Do, 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 do. What else have we got here in the comments? Starts are rolling anyways. Not for this. I don't know whether... It, are they rolling starts for the actual races, are they? It's a standing start um, for week 13. Obviously, being a complete noob to this season, for to this series, I've got no idea how it normally works. Uh, it's also... You might be wondering why I haven't done any setup as well. It's a fixed setup for week 13 as well. I think you can, one of the guys in the comments before was saying apparently you can change a few things. But um, I haven't really delved into that yet. I'm just sort of learning the car in its OEM spec for now. And then um, once we've got that down, as I crash off on the side of the road on my outlap, signature move. <coughs> All right, time to concentrate. I don't know if I should downshift there or not. It always feels slow through here, but don't know exactly how much of the track I can use there before I um, invalidate my lap. So a little bit cautious. And I spun already. <laughs> I don't know why I spun. A little bit surprised by that actually. Good to get the spin out of the way now and not um, in the race. Turn down a little too aggressively, I guess. All right, let's find our pace again. Find our balance and... Okay. Everything 
Looks like it's working still. It is nice to be driving something fast, I've got to say. It's a little less raw than what I'm used to with the MX-5 and the Skippy from last night, but um, it's definitely nice to go fast. I'm sure I can go a lot faster than that through the exit. I can probably run it out a lot wider, but I don't want to invalidate. I need to test the boundaries there. All right, try not to spin this time. to our PB, which is still slow. I think a good lap around here is about two minutes flat, I think. Can we beat it? Yes, we can. Nice. Tenth position. Tenth. <laughs> Probably out of ten as well. But that's all right. We made it around a lap without crashing. I'm happy about that. Conservative. Half a second up again. P12. P12. <laughs> Alright. May as well bring it back into the pits quickly. Seeing as it does count towards our SR tonight, we may as well make the most of it while we have the opportunity. I'm trying to get my SR up to um, up to four so that all I need to do is just complete those four races to get my C license. But um, 
got pretty frustrated last night. The guys in the Discord can attest. I um, set out to try and hit rank five, try and hit C class last night with a ranking of four at least, and um, I um, had three zero X races immediately in a row, which was awesome in the MX fives, and then I had a ten, a ten, a ten, and a seventeen. Just kept getting taken out, and a bunch of guys were taking me out to the Britley as well. They were like, oh, it's that guy from YouTube, and then they just started ramming into me, so that was frustrating, but I guess that happens. That's the end of the session. Here we go. Place. All right, some of the comments here. P18 for maybe nine should have done some pracky. Yeah, I did. I did do some practice, man. I'm just slow still. <laughs> Dave Cam do a let's learn track. Let's learn Silverstone. Actually, I know the track pretty well, but um, I just suck at it in this car. Like if if you put me in a Formula One car, I'd be quick. But um, yeah, still learning it. So. Lots of new things tonight. Okay, let's go back to our relative screen. More brake balance toward, or brake bias towards the front will help the spins. Yeah, I'm going to play around with. Um, I'm going to play around with um, the um, brake balance and everything tomorrow. I think. Um, I wanted to kind of try and keep it OEM tonight, just because I feel like it's important to get a feel for the car before you um, before you start to change things around, because you need to sort of establish a base point. So, um, but one of the kind guys in the Discord sent me a couple of setups to try. As the well. track temp is Welcome, Dave. Celsius, by the way, I always minutes. watch your videos, Let's man. I, I love how you get angry. Get ready. All right, here we go. I always love watching you get frustrated. <laughs> All right, let's do it. How many cordons till we get taken out? On your right. Leave a bit of space. Clear right. Probably could have whole shot it there, left. but oh, we have already got hit. Clear left. Oh, we got a 0x though, we didn't actually lose points for it, so that's alright. Try and keep it smooth now. Watch him spear back onto the track and hit the other guy, yep. Whoa. Right side, play right. Can't say I'm particularly impressed with the quality of driving so far. It sounds like you guys were right. But it is week 13, so we can't be too harsh. with them at least. I was worried that they might just drive away completely, but we're doing alright. How's the um, volume of the shifters tonight? I tried to do a bit of work on that today to try and make it a bit quieter for you guys. Not a whole lot that I can do about it, but I moved the microphone around and cranked the volume up a little bit of the game and everything to try and balance it out a bit better. So let me know if it's improved. Come on, we need more crashes than this. How are we supposed to gain places if nobody crashes? 
Come on, guys. Love the turbo sound. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you hit the kind of wastegate when you lift off. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Got a spinner into the wall. Starting to sort of get the feel for the understeer. This car's got a funny sort of thing going on where it transitions from understeer to oversteer. So you start understeering. You lift off the gas a little bit to sort of balance it out and then it immediately goes into oversteer. And I'm sure that's just a setup thing. I'm sure that can be tuned out. The leader's just done a 200.3. 200.3, that is quick. At least for me that's quick. Garcia behind is now 1.3 V11. Sector 1 is 1.7 seconds off the pace. I feel like I should, I feel like I should take a wider line there. Get a bit more exit speed, maybe. Experiment with that again tomorrow. Okay, well, 10 minutes to go. That's 10 minutes left. Come on, man, keep pushing. The gap ahead is now 3.3. 3.3, okay. 0.9 behind. Oh, we're drifting out. That was slow. Had to back right out of it. Alright, we got a battle now. Probably not for long. Left side. Hold your line. Still there. Clear left. Come on, man. Defend harder. I'm trying, Jim. I also don't want to crash everybody out on live stream. Too much pressure. You've got to be nice guy on live stream. Plus, if I got somebody close in front of me, I can follow them and learn their lines. B12. Bit of Doritos there. Bit of Dorifto. Understeer, rather. I don't know whether I'd really call that drift. Somebody manually disconnected. I don't know whether they were in front of me or behind me, but might gain a spot. Is 
telling me to crash. That's not very nice. Or you mean him? Don't worry, I'm sure you'll get your crash before the end of the session. Oops, almost got your crash then. It's closing in. The gap is now not protect. Your last lap time was at 204.09. Good lap. That's your quickest today. Set to one is 1.8. Off the pace. Thirty beats per minute now. Shows how unfit I am. <laughs> I do have the force feedback turned up pretty hard though. This is a workout for somebody as unfit as me. Comes your crash. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I gotta yield now too. Right the other way. Clear right. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Not quite how I expected that to go. <laughs> Trying to get out of everybody's way. Okay, well, Don't know what the happened there. Come on. Just must have spooked him. doing my same thing I did yesterday and psyching myself out now I can feel myself getting sloppy that's what she said week 13 chaos yeah I'm the one creating the chaos too Problem there is I was turning while I was braking, I think. Problem there is I suck. That's what's wrong. Just done 
left. Two minutes left. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Part of me doesn't want it to end, and part of me is going to be really thankful when it's over. <laughs> Somebody must have had a moment because we're catching up. I don't know if we're going to catch him in another lap though. We are getting quicker. Only three seconds off the pace now, yay! for you Joshua sending you crash vibes because I'm a horrible person we've got a chance here Right, clear right. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on to it. You got a much better exit than I did though. Gonna have to do a little bit of blocking here. No more weaving though, that's enough weaving. Max for Stappen. I wonder if that was legit Max Verstappen or whether that was fake Max Verstappen. Oh no, I'm gonna lose the spot! Oh, <laughs> oh that was fun. <laughs> oh man, what an ending. Oh. <laughs> and we got rammed at the end. Oh well. I don't know if that was legit Max Verstappen that we were racing against or not. I um, don't know, but um, if it was, that's pretty friggin' cool. <laughs> let's um, let's have a look here. Do, 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 do. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think there's really. Let's have a look, quick look at the replay of that last um, that last little bit there because that was pretty hectic. Was that legit Max Verstappen? Because that's cool. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Uh, 
Uh, heart rate. It's a. Um, I was explaining it before. Um, it's a Zephyr HXM. Uh, Zephyr HXM um, heart, Bluetooth heart rate monitor. And I just got it hooked up to the PC. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to do a video on how I did it, but it's very simple. Um, I don't even know if you can buy these anymore, but there's plenty of other things around that are similar. All right, so we're coming up to where the chaos happened, I think. Maybe fast forward a little bit. I think I might have gotten too far behind myself here. Yeah, okay, this is where it was. <clears throat> Pardon me. So he was just way slower than me through here, and then I'm like, where do I go, where do I go? And then I completely screwed my line here. And <laughs> I didn't want to do too much weaving down the back straight because I'm always getting up everybody about weaving, so I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I kind of, I cleared the outside line, then I cleared the inside line, and then I thought, nah. And then I completely screwed up the last corner, or the last three corners. Oh. <laughs> Almost had him. Almost had me. You never had me. You never had your car. All right. <laughs> Look at that. And bam. All right, let's have a look at the results sheet and see if it legit was real life sees Max Verstappen or not. Have a look here. All right, quit. Make a video on the heart rate monitor. Yeah, all right, I will. You got wrecked by Rubens Barrichello. <laughs> Rubens Barrichello or is there another Barrichello in the family that races? Because I would think that Rubens is probably too old for this shit. <laughs> all right, let's have a look at the results. Hang on, i got to get my... Um, OBS and everything hooked up here. Just give me a second. Last session results. Click. All right. Drag that to there and then press this button and magic. There we go. Magics. I think it legit was the real Max Verstappen. <laughs> Looks like his helmet. Let's have a look here. Open a new window. Who knows? It's a relative. Oh, he's only relatively recently come on. I don't know. I don't know. Is there any way to verify? I, you let me know in the comments. I got no idea whether there's um, whether there's any way to um verify that. So Rubens Barrichello does does eye racing. That's pretty cool. What does he What does he drive? Oh, he's a he's an ambassador. Awesome. So you reckon that's legit? I mean, it wouldn't be hard for somebody to copy Max's um, Max's livery, though, would it? I mean, all you need to do is just go into um, go into um, what's it called, trading paints, and just copy it. So who knows? Anyway, I'm going to claim it. I'm going to say, yeah, we raced Max Verstappen, and we lost. <laughs> we're only we're only what was that? I can't even count. We're only eleven positions behind him. Twelve positions behind him. <laughs> All right, so what did we get here? We, um, 159.948 was Max's best time, and that's, yeah, kind of quick. <laughs> uh, plus 23 points as well, that's pretty nice. Uh, what did we get? We got a plus seven, that's good. We needed that after last night's disaster. And yeah, we were 203.1 was my best lap, which is a full second faster than my previous best, so we definitely improved. So what's that mean? Three more races and I'll be as fast as Max, right? Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump out and uh, I'll pull the laptop across and answer some of your questions and stuff here because I know a lot of people were asking me a bunch of stuff. I'm going to take this wheel off quickly as well. Turn off the semi-cube here. And 
pop that out and take the wheel off. The wheel can sit there. All right, let's have a look here. In the higher split, I very much doubt whether that was the higher split, but um, you say Alex Album was there too? Nah. I'm just having a look at that um, split again. Nah. That was my very first race in um, in the um, in the Ferrari, so I very much doubt whether that was my um, whether I was in the top split. But yeah, I know Max and Lando definitely raced all the time. Uh, okay, so you can you can upload paints to, um, exclusive for your team. Okay, I didn't realize that. I'm a noob to that as well. Hundred percent the real guy. Well, that's pretty rad. We um, we got to race Max Verstappen on live stream. <laughs> pretty stoked with that. <laughs> uh, anyway, anybody else got any other questions or anything? I'll just quickly check on Twitch as well. Do, 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 do. A couple of comments there. Uh, Albon, I, I'm sure I saw a video of Albon being shown how to race by, um, by Lando. And he had no idea what he was doing. I think they were driving the Indy cars maybe. Can't remember. And Charles Leclerc is some um, driving too. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, look, the heart rate monitor. So I mean, I'm not going to lift my shirt up on live on live TV here, but basically what it is is it's this little guy here called a Zephyr, plugged to Zephyr, who I don't even know whether you can buy these anymore. And what it does is it connects to a um, like a chest strap thing, so like that, right? Can't believe I'm doing this on live stream but um basically it's got two little electrodes that go like short circuit across your heart basically and it measures your heart rate it just connects to the pc by a blue via bluetooth buyer via bluetooth uh and then there's a little app called um cardia that you use that um you can overlay then in Streamlabs. so that works pretty cool uh so what do you guys reckon do you reckon skippies or um or ferraris for next season i actually kind of enjoyed that i feel like i could probably learn more driving the skippies I feel like um, they're a little bit more playful and a little bit more forgiving and you can kind of learn the nuances of driving and racecraft a little bit more. Really did enjoy the Skippy there, Cowboy. That was a lot of fun. I Actually, I think I enjoyed driving the Skippies more than I enjoyed driving the Ferrari, but I do like the speed. And I'm also conscious that, you know, driving something fast is a lot more entertaining on, on, the, um, on the streams and the videos as well. Um, yeah. So good to see a live stream for the first time. Time to go to work. Have fun at work, Mr. Podium. Um, enjoy yourself. Get them out. <laughs> no, nah, not tonight. Not tonight. You'll have to give me give me a big donation, um, Goose, and I'll, I'll get them out. Actually, no, I can't ask you for a donation because you've um, you've helped me out with the fanatic um, with the fanatic affiliate links in the past. So maybe I should get one out for you. <laughs> I'll send you I'll send you a DM later, mate. <laughs> Skippies with the new damage model. Yeah, I haven't really played around with the damage model. I mean, obviously, I don't know whether it's any different. But, um, yeah, maybe we should do a couple more races. Um, maybe we'll do a couple more races in the Skippies over the next couple of days as well. And um, we might have a bit of a showdown. But uh, that was definitely pretty cool. And, I mean, getting to getting to race legit real-life Max as well was pretty friggin' awesome. Uh, do, 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 do. end up in unintended open wheeler or tin tops. I look, I really enjoy racing. Um, I really enjoy racing open wheelers. That's kind of for you guys that might be new to the stream. I, um, or new to the channel. I pretty much played F1 2010 through to F1 2017 completely exclusively. I never really played any other Sims, if you want to call it a Sim. Uh, and then from there, I, um, I got into iRacing Woo, again, <coughs> it's cold. Uh, started to get into iRacing, tested out a bunch of other stuff. So I've only actually been doing iRacing or anything other than F1 2018 and 2019 for about four months now. Uh, last season was my very first season in iRacing. So very new to it all. Uh, updates been pushed back till tomorrow. Which updates that? Do, 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 do. Parts flying off the car now in Skippies. Yeah, I did actually notice the parts flying off the car. Uh, there was a guy, um, a guy crashed yesterday. I think while we were streaming, and um, parts flew off the car, and that looked pretty cool. What's the um, what's the word on that? Because I know that a lot of a lot of um, 
car manufacturers and stuff and sponsors don't allow you to deface their logo. And that's part of the time the reason why they're not allowed to have realistic damage models. I know that was the case with um, F1 2018 and 19. Uh, the sponsors that have their livery on the cars weren't allowing them to have bits break off. Uh, ever thought of joining a team? Uh, yes, I have. <coughs> um, <clears throat> it's basically just down to time. I do race in Octane Online Racing's F1 series at the moment. I'm doing that every Sunday. Um, I don't have time for a whole lot more at the moment, but um, yeah, I, I do want to get into more of this kind of stuff and I'm really enjoying doing the racing videos. I kind of wanted to test the waters because I haven't been doing a lot of, um, you know, a lot of streaming and a lot of racing content type videos. I've only sort of been doing the weekly F1 and the weekly MX5 Cup videos. And I've sort of been trying to balance it out with, um, with, the, um, with the reviews and stuff like that. Uh, would I go CSW 2.5 or DD wheel from the G29? Depends on your budget, Benji. Um, the CSW is a massive step up. I went to the CSW 2.5 from a G27 and it's a massive step up, but the DD is a massive step up again. So it really just comes down to budget. Uh, any plans to review any of the Fnatic DD wheels anytime soon? Yes. <laughs> Do you really want to get me started on that? Um, so I've been speaking with Fnatic about that for about nine months now. Um, basically, the honest truth is they told me that they didn't want to send them out to reviewers until they had their final software ready, which, um, you know, the Fana Lab, I think it's called. And I think that's fair enough because, you know, obviously that it's not fair to be reviewing an unfinished product and I respect that. Um, but yeah, we've sort of been toing and froing, and I wouldn't say getting stuffed around, but uh, getting stuffed around a little bit. Um, they sort of promised me that they were going to send me a DD uh, back in about May, and it's kind of just been, you know, oh yeah, it's delayed, it's delayed, it's delayed. Kind of like what's happening with people that have ordered them as well. Um, and then I spoke to the PR manager, Kyle, at um, Fnatic just about a week ago now. And he said, yeah, we'll have it to you by the end of September. We've basically just delayed shipping out all the review units until the software is finished. And then I saw Barry Rowland had his review video up the other day and I was like, oh, okay. So, um, I mean, obviously his reviews are a lot more well-established than mine are and there's no jealousy or anything like that at all. I thought his review was really good. Uh, but yeah, I actually genuinely don't know when I'm going to be getting the Fnatic DD wheelbase. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to be a DD1 or a DD2. Um, that's still kind of up in the air. Uh, but yes, I will be getting one. I can't tell you exactly when it will be. But yes, I will absolutely be getting one, unless they change their mind, of course. Uh, and I'll be doing a detailed review of it. Not as detailed as Barry's review. I'm not going to pull it apart and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to sort of show what it's like to drive for the first time. To The honest truth is I actually kind of wanted to review one of those before I got the um, SimiCube, obviously because the SimiCube Ultimate or the SimiCube 2 Ultimate is a much more expensive uh, wheelbase than the, um, than the even the DD2 is. So it would have been cool to sort of go DD2, then the Ultimate, but you know it kind of just didn't work out that way, and I'm certainly happy that I've got the um, SimiCube. But uh, yeah, I'd say if you can afford the... Um, if you can afford a direct drive... It is definitely worth going straight to that rather than baby steps because you find, you know, if you're always taking baby steps, then you end up spending a lot more money in the long run. You're better off just getting what you ultimately want, you know, at the start if you can afford it. But I would also say, and I said this in my 10 things that I wish I knew about sim racing video that you guys have probably seen by now. Um, I, I honestly still believe, and I still stand by my previous statement that um, the... Um, the pedals are the most important thing. A pet pedal, good pedal set, and a good rigid cockpit are the two most important things. So you kind of want to focus on pedals and cockpit before you focus on the wheelbase. I think so. If you've got a limited, um, if you've got a limited budget, then I would definitely, um, I definitely look at pedals and your cockpit first, and then a more expensive wheelbase. Uh, how's the flex in the DD2 quick release? Looks crap. Uh, I'm assuming that you're basing that based off Barry's video. Um, I've been reading a lot of comments around that because obviously it's important for me when I'm doing reviews to kind of do a lot of research beforehand and I like to read through all the forums and sort of see, you know, what's going on, what people have been complaining about and stuff like that. So I have a good idea of what I need to cover in more detail in my videos and sort of try to cover off the points that might not have been covered in other people's reviews. Uh, and the vast majority of people, and I'm not being a fanatic shill here, um, the vast majority of people are sort of saying that they don't have the same problem that, um, that Barry demonstrated in his or that they're having the same problem, but in varying degrees. Um, 
obviously there are some manufacturing tolerances there and I think that you know that little rubber piece that you can see that gets squished up when you screw the, the um, thread thing um, yeah I don't know whether that is um, a problem on some and not on others or something but also I would say that you know when you when you look at the way he was twisting the wheel he was twisting it like that not like that so whether whether you'd really feel that when you were driving I would question what concerns me about it is more snapped pins. Uh, as you guys that have been watching the channel for a while would know, I did have a snapped pin on one of my Fnatic wheels about a year ago now. Uh, and that was due to flex in the quick release. And that was just a dodgy quick release. I replaced the wheel and the next one I had was absolutely fine. Uh, but yeah, with that amount of flex, it, I pretty much would guarantee that you'd end up snapping a pin pretty quickly, especially if you're kind of mucking around with it and stuff. So um, yeah, that would be more my concern than it re reducing the amount of fidelity in the driving feel. Uh, ARP Sim Racing here is saying that he doesn't have any flex in his DD1 either. So, um, yeah, no use running around on 30 FPS with a good pedal set. Yeah, that's true. Also, you do want to invest in a decent quality monitor as well. Uh, Nexus says PC looks bonkers. Yeah, man, it's pretty nuts. Um, if you haven't already watched them, I've got a bunch of videos covering all of the aspects of when I put that together. Uh, you know, all the parts, building it all, bending the pipes, filling it up for the first time, overclocking it, benchmarking it, all that stuff. So check out the videos from the last couple of months to see all that in more details. Uh, the, the sprint pedals, same price as Fnatic V3 inverted pedals. Yeah, that's true also. It also, it also depends on the ecosystem that you're, that you're invested in as well, I guess. But um, obviously those pedals can be plugged in via USB as well. But um, yeah, I agree, um, NVK3, that yeah, he was twisting it in a way that you wouldn't when you're driving. But that doesn't mean... I mean, you wouldn't intentionally twist it that way when you're driving, but... You know, you do when you when you when you're bracing yourself against the car and you're braking and stuff, you do push on the wheel. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's never going to be twisted that way. I would say that you know it's not going to be intentionally twisted that way. It would probably be a more accurate way of um, saying that. Yeah, I'm on a um, I'm on a GT track rig at the moment. Uh, the cockpit. I'm probably going to be upgrading that pretty soon. Uh, I've got a couple of options for 8020 rigs coming my way. Hopefully, pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, we'll be testing out a couple of 8020 rigs as well and sort of giving my opinions on those. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of flex in the, um, I'll show you guys now so you can see there's a little bit of flex in the wheel deck there. You can see, um, you probably would have seen it when I was driving. It's not a whole heap and it doesn't, you don't really feel it when you're driving, but there is a little bit of flex there with the, um, with the Simicube 2 Ultimate. Uh, and I was running about 15 Newton meters in that race just for reference. So, you know, it's sort of up around you know, the maximum of what most people would be running. Uh, I didn't feel any flex at all with the um, with the CSW, though, just so you guys know. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I agree with that, Goose. Um, yeah, I'd say snapped pins, based off that flex that was demonstrated in Barry's video, snapped pins would be my primary concern rather than loss of fidelity. And that's something that he didn't really mention in the video. Uh, whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. But, um, yeah. Uh, have I thought about the traction platform? Yes, I have. Um, I've spoken to Next Level Racing about it. They actually offered to fly me up there to test it out in their display room, uh, which was very generous of them. Unfortunately, I couldn't take the time off work to do it at the moment because I've just got too many other things on. So yeah, I wasn't able to get up there for that. Um, I would love to get my hands on one here, but uh, even with the very generous discount that they did offer me, in fairness to them, uh, it's still very, very, very expensive. And I mean, as as I touched in on a couple of videos recently, I'm sort of in a bit of a phase at the moment where I'm transitioning this to being a full-time thing. And um, in the past, why am I still wearing headphones? I don't even know. Um, in the past, I've, um, I've invested all the money that I've earned from the channel basically back into more gear to review for you guys. Um, so even though I earn a pretty good, um, a pretty good amount of money from this, I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, because I'm reinvesting all of that money straight back into, you know, buying equipment to review. Um, and you know, build, like I paid for the PC completely out of my own pocket at retail, you know, most of the gear that not so much anymore, but you know, all the CSW gear that I had, I paid retail for, you know, everything else, you know, paid retail for microphones, cameras, everything. You know, there's a good sort of 80, 90 grand's worth of equipment that goes into running a channel like this. And, um, you know, I can't afford to eat if I continue to invest money back into equipment. So I've kind of had to say, all right, I need to stop spending money 
Um, otherwise, this is never going to become a full-time job for me because if I'm spending every cent that I'm earning on more gear, then the family doesn't eat. And obviously, you know, I've got a wife and two young kids that I need to look after. Um, if it was just me on my own with no adult responsibility, I probably would have gone full-time by now, to be honest with you guys. But um, yeah, it's um, <laughs> my phone's going off, is it? Oh, I didn't even see that. What's going on? Uh, yeah, look, there's a whole bunch of notifications there. <laughs> Got an email from HP. Oh, what's this? Let's have a look at this quickly. Uh, do, 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 do. Advise the delivery date for the shipping issue 16th of September. There you go, guys. You heard it first on live stream. I should have my HP reverb on the 16th of September. Fingers crossed. We'll hold them to it. If they don't, if I don't have it by then, everybody jump on their Facebook page. No, don't do that. <laughs> Uh, what else have we got here? A couple of new followers on Twitch. Awesome. Thank you, guys. And, yeah, I'm not going to look at everything else now because there's probably some um, personal stuff there. <laughs> nothing nothing rude, but um, I don't really want my address or anything. Uh, what else have we got here? Tip for the skippies. When driving the skippy, take your time and you'll learn heaps about it and the race craft of it with others. Yeah, that's kind of what I was doing yesterday in the, in the stream. I was just enjoying driving it around. wasn't trying to battle anybody and just kind of waiting for everybody to crash around me. Um, <clears throat> I think I might have missed another question a little bit higher up about pedals. Um, I hopefully have a set of Raceworks pedals coming my way soon. I don't know exactly when, uh, but I've been chatting with the guys at Raceworks a little bit recently about doing some stuff with them. So probably a review coming for that. And uh, I might be shooting a bit of B-roll for them to use in their marketing as well. So that'd be pretty cool. Eating is overrated. Depends what you're eating. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Anything else here? PC is most important. <coughs> I don't know, Jared. Um, I think you can go, and I mean, what you see beside me here is testament to that. You can definitely go way over, um, over overkill with a PC. Um, this is a 2080 Ti and a 9900K, both pretty heavily overclocked. Uh, and obviously, you know, 32 gig of RAM, well, not obviously, 32 gig of RAM, uh, pretty high-end water cooling loop and everything. That's that's about an $8,000 Australian PC that you see there. Um, you don't need anything like that to get good results. You know, it's it's not necessary. I mean, I'm running a massive resolution here on these screens. This is 10, 320 by um, 1440, which is about, about, half, about half of 8K, I think. So it's like, it's not because 4K isn't half of 8K. 8K is four times 4K, so it's like 6K, I guess. So yeah, half of half of 8K. So if you put two rows of this together, it would be 8K. Uh, so it's pretty heavy on the um, pretty heavy on the um, on the hardware. And um, I also have the second machine that you can kind of just see over my head there that the McLaren wheel is sitting on top of. That is my old gaming PC, which is now my streaming and video editing PC, and that's a 80 80 86K. Uh, overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz with a 1080 Ti in it. Uh, not necessary for streaming. You don't need anything like that. And I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I kind of walked you through that whole setup. So if you haven't already seen that, check that out as well. Uh, do, 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 do. No, I'm pretty sure it was Raceworks. I'm probably saying something stupid here. Hang on, but it was Raceworks with an X, but it wasn't Simworks. I can't remember. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to look it up here quickly. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was... Um, I can't remember. Might have, I don't think it was SimWorks, though. I can't remember. I've been getting so many emails recently, I kind of lost track. But, um, yeah. Thanks, Colin, man. Appreciate it. Uh, I really enjoy the content. I have to set a second monitor up on my desk at work. <laughs> what time What time is it there for you at the moment, mate? So I'm um, sort of trying to figure out a bit of a content schedule at the moment. Um, it's tricky because, you know, I have to work it around work, obviously, which is like a nine to five thing. And then also, um, you know, getting kids to bed, having dinner, spending time with the missus, you know, all those kinds of things. So it kind of ends up being late in the evening is the only time I can do it in Australia, uh, which isn't perfect for the guys in the U S I think the best time would probably be like six in the morning. Uh, my time for you guys over there. Cause that's sort of when you're getting home from work, but, uh, unfortunately, um, I usually am up editing videos until about one o'clock in the morning. So I um, usually my schedule is I work from nine till five at my day job and then I shoot a video after, you know, after dinner, do a little bit more work for the day job, edit the video starting about nine o'clock at night, usually upload the video about one in the morning. 
And uh, yeah, by then I'm pretty stuffed and I usually end up sleeping till about 8.30 the next morning. So um, yeah, it's hard to find time to do this kind of thing, but this is fun. I'm enjoying this. Any plans to do oval racing? You know, I've never been a massive plan, a f massive plan, a massive fan of oval racing, um, but I should give it a go. I used to have way back when I was a kid in the nineties, I had a game called um, IndyCar Racing Two Papyrus, which I think was kind of the early, um, you know, the early sort of version of this, uh, and I really enjoyed the circuit racing and the oval racing on that. But I mean, back then I was playing with a joystick or even a keyboard, I think. So, um, but no, I need to try it out. I do enjoy the um, the Roval circuit, which has, has a partial banking. So that's pretty fun. Do, do, do. Sim rig should be my missus. Yeah. What I need to do is I need to get Jill, my wife, back on the rig again. Um, that sounded really rude. <laughs> I need to get her back on the sim again. Uh, we were going to do that um, husband versus wife. No bird ring challenge, but she injured her thumb and every time she drove it, she got this massive bruise on the side of her thumb and she just couldn't drive it. But, um, she's all good again now. So I'm going to try and get her back into it again. I think, uh, do, 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 do. we're not all American. Nah, look, I try to, I try to look at my stats, Billy, when I sort of, you know, look at those sorts of things and about 70% of my viewers are in America. Uh, 30%, no, sorry. What's that? Not what I'm saying about 20% are Europe and 10% are Australia. And then, you know, there's a couple of others mixed in there as well. But yeah, the majority of views are US. So I sort of try to, you know, work it in with their schedule as best I can. But, um, you know, you sort of, I want to try and grow within the Australian and European community as well. So, um, game of muscle in the house. Where? Oh, there he is. Spending time with the missus. I didn't even notice it was game of muscle. How you going, man? I was, um, I was watching a lot of your videos just recently, mate. Um, watching all your, um, all your reviews of the various different eight, um, VR headsets. That was extremely helpful. Um, complete noob to, um, to VR here. So, um, yeah, I watched a lot of your reviews on the various different headsets and kind of came to the conclusion that the reverb was probably going to be the best option. I was very, very tempted to buy the, um, the valve index, but it's going to be about double the price here. And I, you know, cause I'm not really doing anything other than sim racing. I don't need the hand controllers. And I just thought the um, reverb was probably going to be a better starting point. So I don't know whether I'm going to throw up every time I um, use it or not yet, but hopefully we'll adjust. How was the um, how was the Sim Expo? I um, watched a couple of your videos from there as well. Uh, are you back home now? Is it all finished? Do, 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 do. Oh, Aussie. That's not how you spell Aussie, mate. <laughs> so 10 a.m. So we're kicking off about 10 a.m. in Scotland. Okay, so you're at work. You're just kind of arriving at work and about to get in trouble. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. Do, 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 do. Andreas, uh, the FGT cockpit not sturdy enough. Uh, look, it was sturdy enough for the um, for the CSW. Um, I didn't have any problems with that. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say that it's sturdy enough for a direct drive wheelbase, but they don't market it as being designed for a direct drive wheelbase either. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it's not fit for purpose by any means because um, they... Um, yeah, they, they never actually said that it was suitable for a um, for a direct drive. Just kind of like that uh, Challenger cockpit that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, which, you know, it, it flexed a lot with the CSL Elite. But, um, you know, I spoke to them. I actually, you know, I gave them the opportunity to address that before I posted the video. And they basically said, look, it's not really designed for the wheelbase that you're using it with. As long as you're clear about that in the video, then that's, you know, we're happy with that. And I said, okay, that's cool. And I, I thought I actually really respected them for that. I thought that was really cool that they said, you know, we, you know, we acknowledge that it's not the sturdiest rig in the world. It's made to a price for somebody that has, you know, a G29 or a G27 or a G920, something like that, or maybe even a Thrustmaster would be perfectly fine. And, um, yeah, so I actually don't have that cockpit anymore. I, um, gave it to a guy who has a, I think he's buying a G29. So yeah, that'd be pretty good. Um, do, 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 scrolling down again, uh, <laughs> Came a muscle types like a drunk man. I have the worst typing. I um, <clears throat> I always get my letters mixed up. The guys that have been in the um in my Discord channel for a while, shameless plug. Jump into the Discord channel if you're not already. The um link is in the description below. Um, yeah, the uh, yes, please do everybody hit the like button. Game of muscles, appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you're um. 
what was I saying? Um, yeah, I'm always getting my letters mixed up. It was, it's like a brain connection to the keys thing. I um, I type faster than my brain brains or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just answered your question, Goose. Sorry, the stream is a little bit behind the behind the text. Uh, what else have we got here? Key West, Track Racer or SimLab for the 8020? Uh, neither, actually. I'm looking at a couple of different ones. I'm not going to say what they are just yet because nothing's set in stone, but um, I did have a chat with SimLab a while ago. Uh, the guy that was looking after it went away on holiday, and I need to actually chase him up again to see if um, he's still keen on me doing a review. Uh, but basically, look, the plan there, just so you guys are aware, is, and I kind of I touched on this at the start of my SimiCube 2 unboxing video a couple of weeks ago. What I want to do is I want to try and start reviewing as much gear as I possibly can, because... I, I feel like the way things have been going, you know, obviously when I first started doing this sim stuff, I had a couple of brands that came on board. I had Next Level Racing that, you know, were amazing because I, I basically reached out, reached out to them from nowhere. I said, all right, guys, I'm going to start doing sim racing. I've got about 25,000 subs I think I had then, so about a year ago. And, you know, I'm coming from a background of building race cars, doing tech stuff, and this is kind of going to be a replacement. So the whole objective was kind of to see whether... You know, sim racing was a viable uh, alternative to real life track racing for somebody like me that has family commitments and can't get to the track very often. And um, they said, yeah, man, sounds awesome. We'll send you a F, it was an FGT. And I was like, whoa, okay, cool. Because it was kind of like the first big thing that anybody ever sent me. Like up until that point, I'd been sent things like a mouse or, you know, maybe a, uh, I got a couple of Android head units for cars and things like that. I uh, had a stereo for my BMW that I got sent. That was probably the most expensive thing that I'd been sent. But um, yeah, that was the that was the first time that I'd um, really been sent something really expensive. So I kind of, you know, I did a lot of reviews on their stuff simply because that's the person that was sending me stuff. And as I said earlier in the video, I was um, I was kind of in this position where, you know, I couldn't afford to keep spending money on gear for the channel because, you know, I can't transition into full time if I'm always spending all the money. So I've kind of had to do videos for Next Level Racing. Well, not for Next Level Racing, but I've had to do videos on Next Level Racing stuff because that's the gear that I had. That's the stuff that I was getting sent. But as we grow bigger, what I'm hoping is that more and more brands will come on board and want to send me stuff to review. Uh, and that will mean that we're able to be a lot more diversified with the content. We'll have a lot more range and we'll be able to be a lot more objective because that's one of the things that's really awesome about Barry Rowland's reviews over on um, Sim Racing Garage. Um, because he has so much experience with so many different things, he's able to draw a lot of parallels and, com and comparisons, which I can't do because I just don't have that level of experience. Um, you know, this is the first direct drive wheelbase I've ever used, so I don't have an experience to compare it to. Um, so what I'm hoping is as the channel grows, um, you know, we'll get a lot more gear in and then, you know, we'll be in a position where we compare stuff and, you know, I'll have a much better, more balanced approach to doing things. And then hopefully all of the shill accusations will disappear with that as well. Uh, what else have we got here? AU keyboard is upside down. Why not try English one that's the other way around? <laughs> He's as funny on the text as he is in his videos. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think I'd better call it a night because I'm pretty tired. Um, yeah, it's been a long day today testing out all these various different cars. But thank you very much for joining in tonight. I'd say this was a pretty successful stream. We got to get our ass kicked by the real life Max Verstappen, which is pretty rad. And we got some pretty cool people in the chat as well. It was great to see a couple of familiar faces from the videos that I watch. And um, yeah, so thank you very much, guys, for jumping in. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments after the stream whether you want to see more of this kind of stuff. I'm definitely keen to, um, to keep doing more streams wherever time permits. Uh, I want to have a nice balance with lots of reviews as well. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed it and make sure you hit the subscribe and the notification bell as well uh, so you don't miss the next video. And if you do want to pick up any of the gear that you've seen in this video, I do have some links in the description below. And as we've been talking about earlier, the um, a small percentage of the profits from those, for some of the gear anyway, not all of it, but the Fnatic gear uh, and the Amazon links for the PC gear as well, they're both affiliates, so... Um, a small percentage of the profits from those sales do come back to me to help out with the channel. And yeah, that's basically the reason why I'm able to do this. So thank you very much as well to our Patreon patrons as well. And uh, yeah, guys, I will see you again soon. Catch you later.
Oh, 